Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to tell you who the morons are who gave you the epsilon delta verifinitions in calculus and why you still have to learn all the rubbish that you do have to learn. So let's begin. Cauchy defined continuity of a function as follows. An infinitesimal change alpha of the independent variable x always produces an infinitesimal change of the dependent variable y. What on earth is an infinitesimal change? Okay, he never defined that. And by the way, nobody else ever did either. Simply put, a change in the independent variable is just simply a change in the y variable. There is no such thing as infinitesimal. It's a nonsense concept. If it were, uh, in fact, uh, possible, then infinity would be possible too. Anyway, about 50 years later, Carl Weistrauss reconstructed Cauchy's or Cauchy's infinitesimal definition in the following way. As you see here in the red, for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for every real alpha, if alpha is less than delta, then uh, f of x plus a alpha minus f of x is less than epsilon, the absolute value, okay? So you'll see x minus c in place of alpha and f of x minus l in place of that in most textbooks today. And I'm going to explain to you what Carl Weistrass did in fact, or Carl Weistrass, <coughs> did in fact um, uh, use to come up with this definition. Um, so let's continue. So the ubiquitous form is this. Uh, given any epsilon greater than zero, they exist delta greater than zero, etc. And it's summarized as follows. If f of x is a function, then f of c is equal to limit as x approaches c, meaning that f is continuous at x is equal to c. So this same very definition was used for the limit definition and just with a subtle change in it. Can you guess what it is before the next slide? And by the way, if I'm going a little too fast for you, it's because I only have a fixed amount of time. So you can always hit the pause button on the video to read the entire slide. So any guesses? Nope. Okay, so you see, this greater than zero is the only change in the definition from continuity, okay, from the continuity definition to the limit definition. So the academic apes knew that the bogus ultimate ratio, zero over zero, would be rejected, which it was back then. So they defined it in terms of all the finite differences, which... Um, in fact, are just the slopes of non-parallel secant lines that Newton and Leibniz were monkeying around with, scratching their powdered heads because they didn't really know what they were doing. But uh, what they did was say, they said, let's just make the sheep happy. We're not dividing by zero, they said. But they still divide by zero because there is no other way for them to find the derivative, which is f prime of x. So the idiot Weistrass could not use the same definition because it was necessary to include the possibility that f of x is not defined at x is equal to c, hence greater than zero. Did you get that? Okay, do you know why? Because otherwise this definition fails. And guess what this is? This is the definition of the derivative, which you're given to practice using the first principle method, like good little children that you are. And so you're terribly distracted from understanding and you think you're so smart and bright. Uh, fortunately, I wasn't like any of you morons. I taught myself calculus. So I saw all the errors long before I did a university course. And I was able to teach my professors who are absolute apes. And how did you get holes in today's function? Do you know? Well, remember you need this hole here at the limit. So you need the hole, otherwise this definition will fail, okay? So how do you get a hole? Well, it's very easy. You multiply by 1. See? See over here? You have f of x multiplied by x minus k over x minus k. 
which is total crap, and k and f of k is the location of the hole. It is generally untrue that you can have a limit at a point x without the function being defined at x. It's completely false. If a limit exists, then so is the function defined at the limit. You'll often hear bullshit like it has a limit, but it's not continuous. As you've already seen in the previous slides, the limit definition is the same as that for continuity with a very small difference, greater than zero. Okay? So, now, this derivative very finition, and, I, and very finition is a word I coined. It's not a definition. It's really just a means of verifying what you think is a derivative. Okay? And here is the actual definition given by Anders Kaysorg, a math uh, master's graduate from MIT. And I'm not going to read it out to you, but it's absolute crap, because observe that you have to know L before you can use it. Uh, and Anders Kaysorg thinks it's all right for you to guess uh, what L is and to hypothesize a guess. And in order to reach a conclusion, you can read all the rubbish in the debate I had with him on page 20 to see what absolute nonsense he talks and l is the derivative l is the derivative being used in this very definition which is the definition of the derivative talk about circularity you morons that's right you use the bogus first principles method in which you divide by zero the new calculus which is the first and only rigorous formulation in human history does none of this monkey business Okay, so what you have in mainstream calculus is pure bullshit with a strong flavor of circularity. If you deny any of this, you are a moron or intellectually dishonest or both, and I do not want to hear from you. Please don't write in my comment section that I don't understand limit, you fucking idiot. I understand it better than anyone on the planet. I piss and shit on your lecturers and you. Do you get it? Especially morons from Math who will be watching this to learn from me. Let's continue. In the book called History of Analysis by Hans Junker, we find the following. Now read this crap paragraph here, okay? Hit your pause button and read it. Notice how Cauchy uses vague expressions such as arbitrary, small, infinitely small changes, smaller than an arbitrary small quantity. What the fuck does that mean? It is very clear that Cauchy didn't know what he was talking about, just like most of you monkeys. What Weierstrass wrote in Epsilonics describes the same filthy whore, only in a different dress. As you know, a different dress does not change the nature of a whore. Well, I've got a little worked up in this video, but uh, I really am tired of all the intellectual dishonesty of the name calling, uh, of the accusations and libel, uh, of my intellectual inferiors calling me a crank when the truth is they're the ones who are the crank. I am correct, and the thousands of you moron lecturers who are teaching this crap are wrong and I'm correcting you and I'm teaching you that you do not have a rigorous formulation of calculus. That's why I came up. That's why I realized the new calculus. Because when I read the crap that was written about your new calculus, when I read the crap that was written about your mainstream calculus and I couldn't understand it, I had to come to the point where I either dismissed it and just left it because there was nothing I could do or find a way around it because the results of it are generally correct with some really strong contradictions. And for example, the one I can think of is the tangent line definition, which the monkeys at Wikipedia forced Webster to change the entry in the dictionary. That's probably... Uh, the main one and that has a difference in the new calculus because there is no tan there is no derivative at, at, a, at a point of inflection there cannot be so uh, the new calculus handles it correctly but not your bogus calculus very well i hope you've enjoyed this episode go back hit the pause button read the slides study it carefully don't comment, you moron, because I'm infinitely more intelligent than you are. If you're going to comment, ask a question. I do not give a damn about your opinion, okay? 
I know better than you. I know better than all of you. You get it, you cranks, you pathetic, disgusting, filthy cranks. Yes, get it. This is the New Calculus Channel. I'm John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.